welcome back to the placement system series. In this video, we're going to be getting server placement going. So this may sound ironic that the actual placement part of the series in the placement system series is left to the last video or one of the last videos at least. Uh, I know for a fact this isn't going to be the last video, but yeah, so the reason why is because this feature is kind of simple and it also requires the collision system. So that was a bit later in the series as well, or not right at the beginning at least. And so that's kind of the reason why. But nevertheless, we are getting it done now, so let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is just create a remote function, not remote event, remote function in remotes. And we're going to call this function place. Okay, so then we are going to create a script in server script service. This is just going to be called server placement, but you could call it, you don't have to name it, but I'm just going to call it server placement. There we go. Get rid of print hello world, and there we go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is create, whoops, the next thing we're going to do is create a function in our placement handler to actually handle the placement. So right below translate obj, the reason why I'm not doing it right here is because these functions are dependent upon activate. And so I want to keep them as close to possible, as close as possible to that function. But we're going to create a function, not a local function, because this is going to be a function that the user will potentially use. Well, if they're using the module, they will most likely use it. And then we're just going to use place, placement, and then place. So the function name is place, and then we're just referencing that this is a part of the module, basically. Okay, this is going to take one parameter, which is just the remote. And that is obviously just going to be this. We could put it in here, but just in case that remote changes or something, or we don't want it, or something else, you know, it doesn't really matter. We just input it in here. Okay, so next we are just going to actually start doing this function. So the first thing we need to do is just check that if not collided and that the object actually exists. If so, then we're going to do the following, which is just invoke the, the, the remote. So invoke server, and you may be wondering why we're not using fire server, and that is just because we are using a remote function and not a remote event. Remote events use fire server, and then remote functions use invoke server. Because typically when we're talking about events, we say that we fire an event or an event was fired. Whereas with a function, we say it was invoked or called, but they're the same exact term. Invoked and called mean the exact same thing. Okay, and in this function, we are just going to, well, in this remote function, we are just going to pass a few parameters. The first one being the object.name. Then we're also going to give it the placed objects location, so placed objects. Then we are also going to give it the C frame of the object. So in this case, we're just going to do object dot primary part dot C frame. And of course, I probably could have done just primary. I think we have a variable for the primary part called primary, but I've already typed this out, so whatever. Lastly, we're just going to give it the plot, and that's that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and actually go into our server placement script and start doing that. So we're obviously going to create a function local function, and then place. We can call it whatever we want, but I'm just going to call it place. And the first parameter is just going to be the player, and then we'll get the rest in as we go. So obviously, we're actually going to need one right away, so I'm just going to do that now, and that's going to be the name or ID of the object. I'm just using the name ID for the name of the model, just because it's shorter, and if we have a lot of uh, arguments or parameters, then we are just going to take up way too much space actually naming them properly. Now, again, in most cases, you are going to want to do it properly and name them their full name. But in this case, I just want to save space because we are going to have a few. And if you want to add on any one, any one, any parameters in the future, you're going to have a really long line. So that is the reason why I am doing it this way. However, just make sure you know what they are and maybe do a comment to kind of show what they are. Anyway, we are just going to type out our first variable, which is just going to be for the item. And this is going to be equal to game.replicatedStorage.items and then find first child ID. And then we're just going to get a clone of that model. Now, the reason why we're not inputting a variable for the location of this, we're just going to assume for this that it's going to always know where that is. However, 
you can change it in here that it will also send that location as well because I'm pretty sure that we got that value down here as well. Although I'm not sure. Yeah, item location right here. So we do have that. So you could put that in, but in this case, I'm just gonna assume that we always will know it's right here. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is just say that item dot primary part dot can collide equals false. Then we're also going to just position the item. So item dot, or not put dot, pivot to, and then we're gonna give it the C frame. So we need to actually fill in some parameters here. So the first one obviously is just the location. They're the same exact ones that are, where are they? Right here. So we give it the place objects and then the C frame. So we have the LOC for the location and then CF for the C frame. So CF, and then we might as well just fill in the last one, the plot. Okay, so then we're gonna say that if plot then, and this is just gonna make sure that the plot actually exists. Then we're gonna say that item.parent is equal to LOC and then after that, we're just going to return true. And okay, so this should actually work if we actually set up the function to call this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just say that game.replicatedStorage.remotes.place and then dot on server, server invoke equals place. So this basically what this is saying is it's just saying the function to call when this gets called is this function. So this function equals this function. Basically that's that. What code should we run when we call this function? So basically it's saying this function is this function. Okay, so now we need to actually call this function on the client and I'm just gonna do it using a mouse click. However, you can do it with a GUI button or another input, it doesn't really matter. That's the reason why we're doing it like this and not just handling the placement as a mouse click within this module. So we could we could have easily just said that you know mouse dot you know button one down connect function, but that would limit us to only having one input. With this, we're actually allowing any type of input. This could be you know a key combination. It could be like you know control C or something, but not obviously control C, but some other uh, combination. It could be a mouse click. It could be a controller button. It could be a GUI, obviously, and it could be a number of other things. So to actually do this, all we're gonna do is just say that local mouse is equal to game.players.local player and then get mouse. That's all we have to do. And then we just say mouse.button one down connect connect function. Okay. So then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna call placement place and we're going to pass in the remote so this is just going to be game to replicate a storage wait for child remotes not require remotes and then we're also going to do another wait for child for the place object and there we go i think we had one extra parenthesis because i messed up the typing again okay so now if we hit play this should work and as you can see it does now we will have one issue and well, actually two issues, one of which is if I were to do, you can kind of see one issue. I'm trying to get one other one to work, there we go. So this shows a few different issues. And just to make sure that it is going on the server as you can see it is, but there's a few issues. First one being that we obviously have collisions. And you might be saying, well, wait a minute, we, I thought we detected collisions in here and that function is right, right here. So why isn't working? Well, we don't, yes, we do detect collisions on the client, but what happens when the object goes onto the server? What if we happen to be in that little period of time that we are moving, it wasn't detected or something and what if there was a way that if we timed it just perfectly, which we are obviously doing, that this will not be taken into account. What we need to do is actually move another collision function to the server, and then from there, detect on the server if we are also colliding. Now you may also see another issue, which is that if I'm to put this over top of this object, 
you will see that it's offset. Not all the time, if I were to just place it right now, it's perfectly fine and we can stack just fine. However, if we are not, and I do some weird, you know, fast clicking and moving at the same time, you will see that it is offset. And I'll explain why in a minute. But first let's tackle that collision issue. So it's actually pretty simple. All we can do is just copy this function, put in server placement, and we just put the object here. We move this variable up here, actually local. We get rid of the spaces. And then the only other thing that we have to do is instead of just saying primary, we just say object dot primary part. And then that is basically that. And oh, right, we also have to return collided. So this will give us this variable, which will be set to true if we are colliding. Now, how do we take it into account over here? Well, what we do is we just say that if handle collisions below here, and I'll explain why in a minute, below this, if we detect collisions, then we're just going to destroy the object and return false. And okay, so that is basically that. Now, why are we doing it below this? Well, you may be saying, well, why can't we just do it before? And then only if we are not detecting collisions do we move it here, otherwise we just destroy the object. Well, the reason why is just because all the objects are going to be stored in item holder, which is the location we're setting here. And the object will not be able to tell if it's colliding with something if it is in a storage container like replicated storage. So only if we put it in the item holder will it actually be able to interact with physics. And in, you know, in this case, we are wanting to in interact with collisions, which will only be detected on the objects in item holder if it is also a part of that folder. So that's the reason why we're doing that. But we can easily just destroy it afterwards and then close the function using return. And that is basically that. So let's go and hit play. Oh, and before that, we obviously input the item. And that is basically that. Okay, so now let's hit play. Okay, so we do this, and doesn't look like, it is difficult to do, but you can test on your own that it does actually work. You can actually see when they are getting destroyed, sort of, for a very split second. But okay, so that's that. It does actually work, and that seems to be working fine. Okay, so now how do we fix the other issue and why is it actually happening in the first place? Because you might be saying, well, we're detecting, we're calculating our snapped you know, position right here. Why isn't it working there? It's like we have just a free position, not a snapped position. And yeah, you, you are correct. We are also doing that. But at the same time, the server has no idea what we're sending to it is correct. So what's actually happening, and I'll put a diagram on screen so that you can actually see what's happening in a more visual way. Pretty much what's happening is if, since we have interpolation on, and this wouldn't be the case if we didn't have interpolation on, but since we do, the model that's moving from position A to B has to interpolate from A to B. So it's moving smoothly from A to B, but it is not snapping instantly to the mouse position. And the reason why is because, well, with interpolation, that's basically what we're trying to avoid. So in that time that it travels from A to B, we can place down the object. And the server has no idea if that's correct or not, if we're sending it a offset value. So unless we implemented another snapping system, which would not be ideal, then we can actually place the object off the grid if we're using the primary part reference of the C-frame, meaning that it'll currently, the reason why it's doing this is because that's the position that it's currently at, not the position that we calculated. So to fix this, all we have to do is just create a function that will actually get us the proper, proper position. So to do that, we're just gonna create a local function called get instant C-frame, no parameters, and we're just gonna return calculate item position. And the reason why we're not calculating or calling this function is for one, this doesn't return anything. 
but what we're doing here is just returning the function that the mouse is at. So the snap position at where the mouse currently is, not the interpolated value that we're getting out of this. So that's the reason why we're doing that. And then all we have to do is just get a variable. So we can say local CF is equal to get instant C frame, get instant C frame. And then we just input that here, right there. So there we go. So that should fix the other issue. So here we go, let's test it out. If I just kind of click randomly here. And as you can see, every single one of them is snapping to the grid. Again, you can test this on your own, but I am telling you it works. If you've done it properly, it works. If it didn't, then make sure you join the Discord server and I can try and help you out, or one of the other people can also try and help you out. Okay, so I think that's actually it. In the next video, we're gonna be going over more security things. So we're gonna make it so that if you rescale the plot on the client, that the the exploiter that does that cannot place outside of the plot. So we're gonna be implementing a server-side bounds function. And yeah, so we're gonna be doing that. And then also talking about how you might secure the placement system in other ways. And yeah, so pretty much that's that. And so yeah, let's just go over the code like I usually do, and then yeah. Before I do that though, I wanna mention that if you are enjoying the video and if it's helping you, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It does help get the video out there and support the channel at the same time. But anyway, without further ado, I don't like advertising, but yeah. Let's just go over the code like I usually do, and then that'll be that. So the first thing we're doing is obviously creating a placement function, which will just check if we are not colliding, and then and the object exists. And if so, we're gonna create a C frame value, which is calculated here. Then we're going to send that information to the server. And then from the server, we are going to use that data to create an object from the name, set some properties. And actually one thing I wanna do is also item.primaryheart.transparency is equal to one. So that's another thing I wanna do. So then we're also setting the transparency to one and then we're going to pivot the object to the current C frame. Then if the plot exists, we're going to set the parent to that ob to the placed object's location that we're getting in here. Then we're going to check if our collisions are there, and if there are collisions, then we're going to delete the object and return false. Otherwise, we're going to return true, and that of course gets called down here, and which will then get invoked here, which will then go back to here, which will do the initial invoke on the function. So that's basically that. If you need any further help, make sure you join the Discord server. Lots of people are willing to help, including myself. And yeah, so thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And yeah.